Hello, fellow gamers. I just got back from India, so today I'm diving into the rich history of the Prince of Persia franchise. Well, not exactly. My recent trip and a new purchase prompted me to explore the various releases of this action platformer using a very specific piece of hardware. I purchased this Miu Mini Plus on AliExpress and it was about $40. Actually, this whole package was $40. So the console itself was a little bit cheaper because there are actually two items in there, which I'll go over. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the first one. This must be the Miu Mini Plus. And this is the second console that I purchased. It was real cheap. It was like $7 and I just wanted to see it. It looked interesting to me, so I just wanted to see what it was about. So I'll go ahead and start with this one. Get the surprise out of the way. Like I said, this was $40 for this whole package. And I think this came in at $7. So actually what got me interested is this had these Sega Genesis controllers in it. They said they were wireless. And then this uh, 2.4 gigahertz receiver. So I open that up real quick here. Not much in there, okay. So these are the, the controllers. They're wireless. And then there's a USB cable. And then the wireless receiver, which I believe is just HDMI, you plug that into your TV. So I'll go ahead and set that up. It actually does have an SD card in it also with games preloaded on it. So just interested to see how well it plays. I'll do a separate video on that. But uh, when I added this to cart, it had popped up and said this was $7. And I thought, what the heck. Um, you get free shipping on any orders over $10, so this would have cost shipping if I wanted to buy it separately. So I'll set this down over here. And now on for the main event here. Now I actually do have other emulation consoles, but I don't have a MiU Mini. The other one that I have are the uh, Anvernic devices, and they're not wireless. So this one interested me because it was wireless, and it was, like I said, less than $40, which is amazing that these things have come down in price so much. So there's the box for the MiU Mini Plus. Slide that out. Comes with an instruction manual. I don't think I really need that. My plan here is to go ahead and put Onion OS on this and then try it out with some games. Actually, one game specifically that's been ported to many consoles. And I'm not talking about Doom. I'm talking about Prince of Persia. And I want to see how well it does with the different emulation consoles. So there it is. It's actually quite a bit small, but it's got a good feel to it. I like the buttons. This is the black, kind of uh, black translucent version of it. It's curious if it even comes with a charge on it. So where's the power at the top here? Or I have to probably charge it before. Oh, light came on. It says Miu Linux Games. It comes with a USB cable. An SD card reader. I believe this had a 64 gig SD card on it. Um, and then the games here. So let's see, we've got, uh, there's favorites. It's empty. I like the buttons are labeled A, B, X, Y. And we'll go into games here. We've got different consoles. So the Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Master System, is that Wonderswan? Got quite a few. Arcade, I'm interested to actually see what games it came with. Um, but since this video, I'm going to cover Prince of Persia. I'm just curious, let's go ahead and open Famicom and see if Prince of Persia is actually already on here. In which case I will use that ROM. Contra Force, Kingdoms, Double Dragon. It doesn't look like it is alphabetical, and there are 6,786 games on here. I'm wondering if there's a search feature. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's a search feature. So I might be there for a while. Apps. It's got File Explorer, uh, some Chinese apps. The battery's actually almost fully charged, so that's actually really nice. Retro Arch. Yeah, interesting. 
So, I don't know how long I would be here looking for Prince of Persia, though. Um, racing Westward. I think these are... Were there really 6,000 games on the Nintendo? That seems like a lot of games uh, to catch up on. Rollerblade Racer, King of Kings, Million Dollar... I, most of these games I actually have never heard of. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 2. I'll try that just for the heck of it. So it's got a little screen. It looks like they have applied some filters. But yeah, that's looks like Ninja Ray. That does not look like the right game. Hmm. That's, that actually does look like it. Maybe this is the uh, the Japanese version then. So slash and jump. Okay. Well, let's come out and uh, let's hit exit game. So size-wise, it actually is a bit smaller. I do have the RG35XX, which I'll go ahead and bring out here. I've had this one about, I don't know, six or seven months, maybe a little bit longer. Um, size-wise, the MiU Mini Plus is smaller. It's probably just as wide, uh, but uh, it's not as tall. So. Uh, the screen size, though, looks identical, honestly. Um, so that's interesting. They, they just have this uh, gap down here. They kind of pushed it up, and maybe some of the space up here on the, the bezel is a bit smaller. So um, it's clicking a lot on me. I'm not sure what that means. It just sounds behind the scenes or what. So the next thing I want to do is remove the SD card on here and put in Onion OS. So I'll go ahead and get started on that, since I'm not going to be able to find the games that I want to play on here, uh, at least for, let's see what Tour of India is, if that is actually kind of like, uh, uh, this is Maharaja, so no, that is not going to be Prince of Persia either. So, no, okay, let's exit the game there. And this, what it comes with for the OS is actually very easy to navigate, other than there's just way too many games on here. So when I get it plugged into the computer, I'll go ahead and see if we can just search using Windows Search for the ROMs. And we'll go ahead and keep any of the Prince of Persia ROMs that are on here and play those, as well as ROMs that I've sourced from other places. What I do want to put on here, let me hit back, does this have DOSBox? Because I don't see DOSBox on here. I will be testing a DOS box. I think there's about seven or eight systems I'm going to test that Prince of Persia has been lo loaded on. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started on that. The SD card does come with quite a variety of ROMs, and for this video, I wanted to keep all of the Prince of Persia ROMs. There are quite a few, some of which look like they may be duplicates. I will use the North American ROMs where there are different releases on the same system. While this video is for entertainment purposes only, and I have no idea about the licensing and distribution of games or ROMs, nor can I give any advice on what your local laws say about this. Interestingly, I did come across this archive of Apple II source code written in 6502 assembly on GitHub, which does read that anyone can run it, but Ubisoft retains the right to distribute Prince of Persia games. The first thing I did was copy all of the ROMs and BIOS files to my local computer, as I will be reformatting this card to install a fresh copy of Onion OS. I'll include a link to the Onion OS for you to follow the instructions if you want to install yourself. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the 64GB card that came with this MiU Mini Plus. However, the wisdom of the internet does suggest using a better SD card, as some people have reported failures with the stock card. Booting up for the first time takes several minutes as the file system is being prepared. Once set up, I can just hit A to finish the install. As you can see, the Onion OS comes with dozens of new emulators, including Arcade, Atari, Nintendo, Sega, and even retro computer systems. Now that everything is set up, I will power up the MiU Mini Plus with the power button on the top here. There's a small green LED that lights up. I did add this custom splash screen that I found on Reddit and installed it using one of the packages. 
There are a number of emulators I've installed, and selecting one will bring up its game list, of which I only have two on my list right now. Our journey begins in 1989, when the first Prince of Persia game was created. Developed by Jordan Mechner, this groundbreaking platformer took players to ancient Persia, where they controlled a daring prince on a quest to save a princess from the evil vizier. Let me know down in the comments, what was your first system you ever played Prince of Persia on, if you've ever played it? The first time I played Prince of Persia was actually on the Xbox in the early 2000s. Prince of Persia originally released on the Apple II, although I could not find any Apple II emulator for the Miu Mini. But this classic game was later ported to many other computers, including the MS-DOS, Amiga, and Atari ST, and a variety of consoles. Here's the DOS release using the DOSBox emulator. In 1989, this game was quite advanced, with movie-like quality and colorful backgrounds. Actually, the original Apple II release used only 16 color palette, and despite the limited color range, the game's fluid animation made it a standout title. Fun fact, the game's creator, Jordan Mechner, used his younger brother as a model for the prince's movement, capturing each action frame by frame to achieve the lifelike animations. In 1990, Broderbund Software released the game on the Atari ST computer. Yes, the Atari had a line of computers they released in the 1980s. The Atari ST was a direct competitor to the Apple Macintosh and the Commodore Amiga, with its Motorola 68000 CPU and only 512 KB of RAM. The Miu Mini with the Onion OS does a really good job emulating both the PC-DOS and the Atari ST computer systems. Both systems did show up with a form of early copy protection that appears after completing the first level. You are told to reference the included manual to find the right potion to drink. I found this PDF on the internet with a table to decode the answers. In addition, some versions were hacked, for example on the Atari ST computer, where you only have to pick up the first potion. Players could enjoy Prince of Persia on the Atari ST using either a joystick or the keyboard. But for the joystick, it only supported a one-button joystick like this one. Unfortunately, I could not figure out how to use an external joystick with the Miu Mini. But in this case, the single red button is a fire button. Jumping and climbing is enabled by pushing up on the joystick. Climbing on a ledge involves standing it and facing and pushing the joystick straight up. However, with RetroArch, I can change the button mapping where I remap the B button to emulate pushing the joystick up, thus enabling it to be a jump button and such a quality of life improvement. Now I want to switch from the 16-bit computer systems to try out 8-bit emulators on the Miu Mini Plus. Now you might be wondering, wait, Prince of Persia on the Game Boy? Yes indeed. This iconic platformer made its way to the handheld console, and it's quite the adventure. Published by Virgin, the Game Boy version faithfully captures the essence of the original. The controls are surprisingly smooth considering the Game Boy's limitations. Jump, climb, and fight your way through treacherous traps and enemies. Graphically, the Game Boy version is impressive. The green palette doesn't hinder the experience, and by pressing L2 and R2, I can alter the color palette to add to the game's mysterious atmosphere. Seven years later in 1999, published by Red Orb Entertainment, is the Game Boy Color release. Graphically, the Game Boy Color version impresses with the addition of colors. The gameplay mechanics, however, remain exactly the same. Now, diving into the nostalgic world of the Sega Game Gear handheld. The Game Gear had a 12-bit color palette versus the 15-bit color palette on the Game Boy Color. While it fell short of the Game Boy's color depth, the Game Gear's larger backlit screen provided enhanced visibility in various lighting conditions. The Game Gear version included more textured blocks and platforms. The mono sound is not great on the new mini speaker, but also the original Game Gear sound was probably not any better. The Game Gear actually shares much of its hardware with the Sega Master System, and the games are often identical between the systems. And with Prince of Persia, the ROM dumps looked binary the same, from what I could tell. I'll revisit more handheld releases from the Prince of Persia franchises when Ubisoft comes in. But for now, let's talk about the console releases, starting with the NES. This game released in 1992, and there's not much to say about this port, 
In fact, Jordan Mechner had already moved on to writing the script for Prince of Persian 2 while Motive Time ported this to the Nintendo. His response upon seeing the port was, it's okay, nothing spectacular. As I'm working my way through the Prince of Persia backlog, I'm finding that I carry this little handheld around a lot. So I've decided to get a case for it. I found this hard drive case on Amazon for less than $8, and it seems to fit just right. Now I already have this case for RG35XX, which you can see is a little bit bigger. I'll provide a link in the description to the exact case I purchased. It will be an affiliate link, but you can also search Amazon for MiU mini cases and get a variety of choices. Now I'm going to install this included screen protector. This will give the screen some added protection from scratches. It's pretty easy to install. Filling up the thin plastic that this shipped with, the screen looks very clean already. So it's just a matter of lining everything up and now pressing out the air bubbles. The installation is done and I can get back to the games. The more graphically impressive systems in 1992 are the 16-bit home consoles, which have some notable features. The Sega Genesis release was done by Tengen, which is a wholly owned American company of Atari games, for publishing home console games. The gameplay mechanics remain faithful to the original, just with improved character sprites and backgrounds. Released in the same year was also the Sega CD version, which was available in North America, Japan, and Europe. The game introduced CD quality sound and full motion video. Gameplay mechanics remain similar, so it's really the CD quality soundtracks that differentiate the Genesis release from this one. And it actually sounds and plays pretty well in the Miu Mini. What do you want? Stop it! Leave me alone! Princess! While I'm talking about Prince of Persia releases on CD, Prince of Persia made its way onto the TurboGrafx-16 CD platform, with a port handled by Hudson Soft. The CD quality audio sound sounds good on the Mew Mini, and the gameplay is pretty smooth, with the frame rate not quite staying at 60 FPS, even though the Mew Mini is overclocked to 1900. Pressing select brings up an in game menu to save progress. Add a name. And adjust the game speed. The lower the value, the faster the combat is. Oh man, that's fast. Okay, that's a little too fast. The 
The Super Nintendo took the original game's brilliance and cranked it up to 11. I think this is the definitive version to play on the Mew Mini. The 16-bit graphics combined with the smooth and fluid animations from the original are still here, but now you're getting even more detail. While the other systems only had 12 levels and gave you one hour to complete, the Super Nintendo has 20 levels and 120 minutes to complete. In addition, on the SNES, you can enter a cheat code which allows you to do level selection. This is really helpful for practicing the more challenging levels before eventually fighting the menacing Jafar. The Super Nintendo was the only release that I actually attempted a complete playthrough on the Mew Mini in an entire weekend. I enjoyed it so much that I immediately went on to the Super Nintendo release of Prince of Persia 2. The game was ported to SNES by Titus Interactive, whom I learned also developed and published the famously bad Superman 64. This game has a reputation for being unplayable on the Nintendo 64 with confusing controls and technical flaws. Just look at this review from N64 Magazine in 1999. The game's final verdict being an utterly hopeless, consistently appalling leper of a game. Hence, I was horrified when I began playing their port of Prince of Persia 2. There's something wrong with this game, and my first thought was to blame the emulation on the Miu Mini Plus or the ROM itself as it was copied from the SD card that I had backed up. I can't even make it out of the window, jeez. After doing some research on the internet, I discovered that the emulation was fine, and it's just the game itself that seems to run too fast. Enabling automatic frame delay did seem to help a little with the latency, and I'm eventually make it to the end of the first level. I would recommend staying away from this version, not only for the gameplay, but it's also missing the last level. Prince of Persia 2 did release on five different systems, and the game mechanics between the systems were quite similar. The DOS version being the most popular, I managed to get quite far into this game, but it is very challenging, and I have to make judicious use of save states to really progress. Some sections require precise timing and placement, which seem impossible. With enough tries, I managed to hang on to this bridge. I don't know how much to blame on latency in the emulation, or if this game is really just that hard. Again, I enabled automatic frame delay, which does help, especially during fighting and action platforming, like running into a jump. The cutscenes between the levels are enjoyable, such as this one where the prince takes a ride on a magic flying carpet. So I found this ROM on the SD card also, and it was marked as a prototype. So I looked into it, and a prototype port was discovered a few years ago for the Sega Genesis. I did find the game very playable on the Miu Mini, especially after applying a patch, which is available on romhacking.net. In the description below, I've included a link to the patch, as well as a site that provides a ROM patch or JS. If you want to give it a go, applying this patch fixes the music and also the game-breaking bug on level 9 that prevents any access to the horse statue. But with the patch, the horse statue is easily accessible, allowing the prince to progress to the next level. Without the patch, you're going to have to enter a code to get to the next level. Earlier in the video, I showed you some handheld releases. Well, in 2003, Ubisoft released The Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time on several different consoles, including the Game Boy Advance. Visually, the GBA can't match its home console counterparts, but I did find playing this portable game on the Miu Mini a fun time, and the GBA version introduces some exclusive enemies. Although, they really are not that challenging to beat, and the puzzles are pretty straightforward. I would recommend playing Prince of Persia Sands of Time on the Game Boy Advance. Ubisoft's next set of handheld releases are on the Nintendo DS. 
there are three games, and the Mi Mini Plus does handle DS emulation quite well with the Drastic Emulator, despite it not having touchscreen controls. There are a number of options to set, as you can see here. Since the Miu Mini Plus does not have a touchscreen, the controls are emulated through the use of the D-pad. Here you can configure the DS firmware settings and preferences like name, language, and a few others. In addition, it has cheats and save options. Holding down the home and start button brings up another menu to set overclocking, which I'm gonna crank up to 1800. Also, there are options for setting screen colors and layouts where you can alternate between top or bottom screen or show both screens at the same time. The first game I'm playing is Battles of Prince of Persia. I'll go ahead and restart the game with all of my settings applied. This is a card-based strategy game. I actually enjoy playing strategy games, so I'll go easy on my review here. I want to play in English, but first I need to bring up the stylus to navigate. Pressing A simulates tapping the stylus. There is a very lengthy tutorial which makes use of both screens. The top screen provides the tutorial while the bottom screen advances through. Pressing R2 toggles between the top and bottom screens. I will move my stylus to hover over the check mark and leave it there. Now switching back to the top screen. I should be able to hide the stylus somehow. Okay, pressing L2 on the back hides the stylus. Now, simply pressing A will advance through the tutorial as if I was tapping on the check mark. These controls are tricky and it takes some effort to get used to, but the game is playable on the Mew Mini. First, I need to choose a card for the number of moves I want to take in my turn. I can check on my player positions at any time. The yellow icons are my players and I have eight of them on the screen. I will play the four move card with effects. Select my player and use attack. Based on the stats, my chances are great here. Well, that was an easy fight. I'll attack again with another army. That should hopefully wipe them off the board. Which it did. I'm awarded one victory point. Gameplay continues going back and forth until I or the CPU gains enough victory points to win the battle. The next two Nintendo DS games return to the action platformer genre that Prince of Persia is known for. I'll start with The Fallen King. However, the controls are 100% touch base. Again, the stylus is simulated by using the D-pad and pressing A to tap. That's it, there are no other controls. After a little bit, I seem to be getting better with the controls and moving the cursor around the screen. There's a lot of scaling up and down walls. Enemy fights are pretty easy, however, as they only require moving the stylus and tapping directly on them. I'm struggling with the boulders, though. Now moving on to the Forgotten Sands. The controls are pretty much the same with those same annoying boulders. The enemy fights are now more difficult, with specific maneuvers on the stylus being required. Probably with an actual stylus this would be much easier. I have to admit the gameplay and animation is very smooth on the Miu Mini Plus. It's really just the controls that's holding this game back. I wish the developers had provided a setting to enable the D-pad and buttons. Trying to first click on the enemy and then immediately follow up with a slash is incredibly difficult. Okay, I got it. Are you kidding me? Another one? Uh, 
Okay. Think I actually got this figured out. Yeah, it's not so bad once I figure out the controls. It's a time door. There really are a lot of throwbacks to the original game that makes this somewhat enjoyable. I do have to say the Mew Mini Plus handles Nintendo DS emulation really well. Again, it just comes down to the controls. And I don't know if it's worth playing this game this way. Moving on to the next game, this is a mod from 2022. It makes use of the EC Wolf port, which is a native Wolfenstein 3D engine running on the Miu Mini. I came across this game demo from a video recommendation while watching various Prince of Persia playthroughs on YouTube. Which prompted me to scour the internet to find this mod for download. It actually only has three levels, but as you can see, the 3D gameplay on the Miu Mini is really fun. Although the sound is not great, so if you can get past that, it's a fun 20 to 30 minute play. This took me a few hours to figure out how to set up. After finally sourcing the right files from my Xbox Game Pass install of Wolfenstein 3D, and then downloading the right version of the EC Wolf engine, and fixing a few bugs of the mod itself, I finally got the game working. I'll include a link to my GitHub, which includes the installation instructions and a patched version of the Pop Mini mod, which I'm running here. Well, that wraps it up for the playable Prince of Persia games on the Miu Mini. In total, I played 13 different systems and 18 variations from the Prince of Persia franchise. I think this was a good test of the capabilities of the Miu Mini Plus, and it performed quite well. The one system in the 90s that surprisingly didn't get a Prince of Persia release was the original Sony PlayStation. I do want to test and see how well PlayStation emulation works on the Miu Mini Plus. So I found another puzzle platformer from that era. In North America, we got three releases of Tomb Raider on the PlayStation. The default emulator is PCSX Rearmed, which does require a BIOS file, but one conveniently came on the SD card. Emulated memory cards are supported for in-game saves, as well as save states. The first Tomb Raider is a 3D platformer where Lara Croft begins her quest exploring the mysterious caves of Peru. Controls are a bit clunky by today's standards, but again, the Mew Mini Plus does not disappoint with emulating the original PlayStation. Unfortunately, the Mew Mini cannot emulate Dreamcast or Nintendo 64 games with its ARM Cortex-A7 processor. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for other great videos about video games and gaming consoles. Thanks, and here's another suggestion for a video to watch.